Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS. Today in this session, we are going to see current affairs of 20th March 2024. So we are going to take Delhi edition here and we are going to pick out the articles which are relevant from our examination point of view. And after picking out of articles, we are going to see like in how many dimensions you can think about that topic. So this dimensions will give you a wide approach to get your own perspectives regarding that so and so topic. And even if you are reading an article in a multi-dimensional manner, so you, that will be helpful to improve your thought process. And even whenever you are writing your answer, so automatically you will be writing your answer in multi-dimensional manner. Okay, so you have to write as many dimensions as possible in your essay as well as in your main answer. So this is the key to clear your PSC. So this is the key, but nowhere, no one is teaching how to read this current files in this multi-dimensional manner. And if you are watching this Rathod's IES current affairs analysis, so please do watch consistently. So that within few months, you will be habituated to think one issue in many dimensions. So this is very, very important. So now let us see the front page and we are only going to discuss articles which are relevant from our examination point of view. And you know that this year we are going to have Lok Sabha elections and even dates had been fixed by Election Commission of India and most of the articles are political articles. So don't bother about this political articles. So they will not fetch you anything in your preparation for UPSC. Okay. So now let us see the first article. So title says Supreme Court issues summons to Ram Dev in Patanjali misleading ads case. So here there is one concept. So you might be thinking that why we have to think about this Patanjali. So why we have to know about what is this misleading ads case. But there is one act that is Drugs and Magic Remedies Act of 1954. So here how this article is relevant from our examination point of view. So I will let you know. So if we are talking about healthcare. So we are having different types of healthcare in our country. For example, if you are not feeling well, you will be going to hospitals. So in that hospitals, you may go to allopathic center. And apart from this allopathy, there is also homeopathy. And we have Ayurveda. And we have some traditional medical systems like Unani, Siddha, etc. So normally we will be seeing these three are prominent. Everyone is knowing like allopathy and homeopathy, Ayurveda, etc. Right? So Ayurveda deals with this plants and plants extracts. So like that in this homeopathy, they will be focusing on the extracts itself. Okay. But normally we will be going for this allopathic. So if we are talking about this Patanjali, so what is it doing is it is doing misleading advertisements. So it is going for misleading ads or advertisements regarding magic drugs. Like for example, I will give you one thing so that you can understand what exactly is this magic drugs. So there are some diseases which do not have the permanent cure in allopathy. So only we will be giving you the symptomatic treatment that means according to your signs symptoms drugs will be giving like if you're feeling pain means painkillers if you're having a fever means drugs which will decrease your temperature like that we will be giving like symptomatic treatment so what here Patanjali is claiming that there are some drugs which are curing 
diseases permanently so those are called as magic drugs so this is about some background like what is happening and how this article is relevant from our examination point of view so in your gs paper and governance if you have gone through your syllabus so we have health so from that area point of view this article is important so now let us see what is this article exactly so why this is a news so supreme court asked this yoga guru baba ram dev to personally appear in contempt case initiated against patanjali ayurved for publishing misleading advertisements so because of this misleading advertisements which are published so it is violation of drugs and magic remedies objectable advertisements act of 1954 so there is one more important word you can see is contempt of court yes so this contempt of court is also very important so this contempt of court which comes under polity so polity will comes under gs paper 2 and this year there is a high chance of getting your prelims question from this contempt of court so in this contempt of court we have two contempts so one is civil contempt and next one is criminal contempt So I will give you one example so that you can understand what exactly the difference between criminal and civil contempt. So criminal means like it is somewhat extreme, and punishment will also like extreme. Yes, if you say civil means here Supreme Court which gave an order. So whenever there is willful default of Supreme Court order, that will comes under civil contempt. so whenever any personal group of person so they want to decrease the power of supreme court and they are criticize supreme court they are vandalize supreme court that will comes under this criminal contempt okay so here you have to see what is this contempt of court and you have to see like what is the importance of contempt of court okay so you have to know what is a civil contempt and criminal contempt exactly the difference is so there is a chance of getting prelims as i said but even there is a chance of getting mains question from this contempt of court okay so this is about this topic and we are going to see that in detail because it is at most important So as you know, the present context why it is a news because Supreme Court asked this Patanjali Ayurved, okay, that is Baba Ramdev Guru, who started this for the violation of drugs and magic remedies objectionable advertisements act of nineteen fifty four to present in the court. So what happened here is recently Supreme Court delivered. Resounding rebook to Patanjali Ayurved, led by Baba Ram Dev. So in this case, the famous case is Medical Association versus Union of India case. So in this Medical Association versus Union of India case of twenty twenty two, so here Supreme Court delivered resounding rebook to this Patanjali Ayurved, and court decision is stemmed from Patanjali's dissemination of misleading advertisements. and even prompting ban on its marketing activities until the further notice the red supreme court said that yes patanjali is going for this misleading advertisements so because of this even patanjali had to stop its marketing strategy till they are getting the further notice so they should not go for giving for going for marketing or advertisements So, what are the allegations against this Patanjali? The first one here is so here this case had been filed by this Indian Medical Association, that is in short IMA. So, Indian Medical Association logged a petition in twenty twenty two August, 
after this patanjali's publication of advertisements denigrating allopathic medicines that means he was saying that so those allopathic medicines are ways so you can use this uh, ayurvedic medicines so that you will be getting cure so because of this the petition which is filed by this indian medical association and finally that uh, supreme court judgment is medical association versus union of india 2022 and second important allegation is title of advertisement in conflict so title of advertisement is misconceptions which are spread by allopathy save yourself and the country from misconceptions spread by pharma and medical industry it is directly telling about this allopathic medicines right so because of this allopathic medicine industry will be get affected so because of this Indian Medical Association filed a case against Patanjali. And what are the reasons behind this controversy now? Here, Ram Dev statements they are labeling allopathy as a stupid and bankrupt science, and even attributing COVID nineteen deaths to allopathic medicine. That further fuel the controversy. Okay, so these are the some accusations made by this allo uh, this Patanjali on this allopathic medicine. so these are the some important things that you have to see and apart from that you have to see what are the legal arguments against patanjali so the first one is patanjali violated the law okay that is drug and magical remedies act and consumer protection act of 2019 and next one is under this drugs and other magical remedies act there is one section that is section 4 So this section four talks about misleading advertisements regarding the drugs is prohibited, punishable, or imprisonment, fines, etc. So everything will be dealt in this section four of drugs and other magical remedies act. And even it states that no person shall have shall take any part in the publications of any advertisements relating to a drug if advertisement contains the matters. for example which is giving directly or indirectly false impression regarding the true character of a drug and if there is any false claim of the drug and otherwise if there is any false or misleading in any material particular so here in these cases that will comes under violation of this act okay so these are the very important points and this is the concept that you have to know regarding this article and now let us go back to our hindu page and the city page there is nothing important you can simply skip this and you can move on to this states page the states page also i found like most of the articles or political articles regarding elections regarding political parties and their agenda okay fighting between the political parties like that So here you can see one case study. Portal for water level in dams canals launched in Rajasthan. So here always dams they are facing a problem. So let us see like dams in India. I will tell you a small story. Okay. So listen this story. dams in india for example let us see this is a river which is moving in this direction so what happened whenever rivers are moving finally they will be forming deltas or estuary and they will join seas or ocean that means fresh water is mixing with salt water is or no but what happened here is so we don't want to waste this fresh water to enter into this oceans or seas but we want to use this water which is flowing in river as much as possible so how can we use that water so we can use that water for agriculture purpose for irrigation purpose and for providing of drinking water purpose and we can store water and we can use that water in the drought periods like that is yes or no and 
Here what happened with this idea? We came up with building of a dam. So we started storing water. Right? So with this dam, we started storing water. So that less water is released into the downstreams. So this is the concept. Correct? And now let us see here. So you have to see like the dams that are present on the most of the rivers in India, they were of British times. And they are of more than 100 years. So what happened? So whenever the dams they are built long ago, so there is siltation. Siltation is nothing but I will draw this diagram so that you can understand. So this is the dam for example. So here we have gates like that. So water is stored here. For example, if there is any rainy season or monsoon season, so flooded water is coming and entering into this dam. So that they will be carrying as many sediments as possible because of good runoff. Sediments, they started settling bottom of the dam. So they are belonging to more than 100 years. So what happened? So maximum sedimentation happened. So because of this, what is the carrying capacity of this dam which had been decreased? Okay. And even dams will also cause earthquakes. That earthquake is called as dam induced earthquake. Okay, clear? So here you have to know different dimensions. So what are the dam? What are the dimensions like? The first one is what are these dams and why we need these dams? So what are the uses and applications of these dams? And second one is important rivers in India and dams on them because last year 2022 2023 there was a question regarding river and dam and next third important point here is you have to see what are the problems faced by these dams and you have to see what are the measures can be taken and you have to see what is the impact of these dams, especially from agriculture point of view, from environment and ecology point of view. And not only environment and ecology, agriculture, you have to see from economy point of view. Okay, so what will be the impact of building of these dams? Because we are decreasing the water flow. And even land acquisition will be the problem. Okay, so even you can see like different protests which are seen in India for construction of this dam. For example, Narmada Bachao Andolan. Yes or no? So even till now, the people who lost their lands, who lost their homelands, so they had not get proper rehabilitation. Okay, so from the government. So in this way here. The protests are happening in India. So you have to see examples and what are the reasons for this protest. So what is the present status and what can be done in the future. Because you are future bureaucrats. It's always I'm saying that you are future bureaucrats. Yes or no? Will you make me proud as a teacher? Will you remember me in your life after getting the success? Okay, let it be. Yes, now let us move on to our paper. Yes, you can see in the states we also I found nothing much important. Yes, in this editorial page there are two important articles we have to see. So one is old topic and one is new topic. Okay, so one is old topic, it is regarding election commission. So number of times we all, we had already discussion regarding this election commission. Again, there is no choice. We have to see that. Okay, we are going to see that. And 
one more thing here is we are going to discuss one important foreign policy that is neighborhood first policy so here we have to see this and here you have to see like what is this Gallipoli project so now let us see the dimensions So this article is talking about this neighborhood first policy. So this article is important from GS paper to under international relations. If you are saying about this neighborhood first policy, what exactly it is? So every country it is having its own guiding principles like how to maintain relations with other countries. For example, take me as an individual, so I have my own policy like uh, to do friendship with whom, so to talk with who, okay, so as you all know that, so there will be like lots and lots of policies they will be having to an individual, so I, I uh, you already know that, so I had into caste marriage, yes or no, so what happens here is, uh, so, I have my own policies like how to talk with whom. So, the same way here any country per se, okay, here any country per se have their own policy, have their own policy like how to maintain relationship with another country and to whom they have to give the priority first, okay, and to whom they have to give the priority first. So, this policy will be guiding them for their own benefits or for the mutual benefits like that. So, in the same way, India also have different types of policies like neighborhood first policy, activist policy. So, here this article is talking about this neighborhood first policy. So, why we came up with this neighborhood first policy is, so we are giving priority to our neighbors first. So first neighbors, then only others will be next because always our neighbors will be there. Right? Yes or no? So even though if my husband is not there in the house or if something happens to me, so if I if I need something, I will be going to my neighbor house, right? So here because of this, the neighborhood first policy is the first policy of India. So we are having a good approach towards our neighbors. But unfortunately, you can keep aside China and Pakistan. But in this neighborhood first policy, so which are the other neighbors of India? So we have Bhutan, Nepal, Myanmar, Bangladesh, yes or no? So whether you are having a good relations with some countries, yes, there is up and downs of relations are happening. But India is following this neighborhood first policy. And this article which is talking about India-Bhutan relations. And especially you have to know about this Galapagos project. And there is a high chance of getting question regarding this Galapagos project. It is between India and Bhutan, right? So here you can get a very simple question like with which and which countries this Galapagos project is there? India, Nepal, India, Bhutan, India, Bangladesh, India, Myanmar. So in this way you can get options or else UPSC may dig into deep and they will be giving you questions like consider the following pairs Galapu project India Bangladesh second one Kaladan project India Myanmar like that okay and you can see like some friendship bridge or parliament India Afghanistan like that and ask you to find correct pairs or incorrect pairs. So in this way also you can get a question. So in this way also you have to prepare. Clear? Okay. Now let us move on to our notes part. Let us see these two topics together and later on we will be come back. 
so here you know that especially if you are having a very good relations with bhutan even the bhutan it is a very small country so we are having very good relations and bhutan it is a land locked country as well so people have always marveled at a very how a little bhutan with area of just 30 sorry 8 1394 square kilometers and if you're talking about this population of Bhutan it is 7.7 .7 lakhs but if you see Bhutan is a very small country and neighbor is a very big country like India so India is having area of 3.28 million square kilometers and India's population is going to even cross as 140 crores Okay, so we are the closest of partners and we are of best of friends over past 50 years and even more than this 50 years. So both nations, they look to each other as equals and we are treating each other with utmost respect and we are having long realized size, not really make the difference in the relation. So based on the size, we are not showing any discrimination or so this size it is not at all a reason not to maintain a good relationship. So India has constantly respected Bhutanese identity and Bhutanese unique religious practices and even desire to be economically prosperous and we are also helping them to retain its own way of life. We are not interfering in the sovereignty, integrity and territory of this Bhutan at all. Even though we are a mighty country which is neighbor to this Bhutan. So this is the greatness of India actually and I am I am like very proud to be an Indian. Yes, of course. Yes, if you are talking about this Galapu project, the king of Bhutan paid a visit to India in November 2023 and during which he mainly planned about the city at this Galapu in southern Bhutan. So after this Galapu, it is like a special economic zone to attract foreign investments and increase the prosperity of this Bhutan. And actually this Galapu mindfulness city, they are focusing on sustainability and they are focusing on well-being and environmental concerns as well. So this type of project which is expected to lead people of Bhutan to higher income levels so that in this project India is also helping. So not only this project we are helping for Bhutan but even so we are the important consumers of hydroelectricity of this Bhutan. So we are the purchasers of this hydroelectricity. So hydropower cooperation it is one of the bedrock for India's relations with Bhutan. And even several projects are also made in cooperation with India. Okay for example in Thimpu etc. So there is also delays that are seen in some projects like Punata Shengchu uh, to hydropower project. So it is going to be complete in 2024. And in this way, I can see like between India and Bhutan, we are having very good relations regarding government to government model of cooperation. And even India has also been a major development assistance partner to this Bhutan and also contributed around 5,000 crore to its 12th five year plan. So in this way India is helping a lot so that here I can say like we are focusing on this India neighborhood first policy for sure. And next topic is about selection and election because of this elections of Lok Sabha. Yes, we are talking about election commission of India, members, appointment process, selection committee and this selection committee is also in news because of removal of CGI from the selection committee and replacing with the cabinet minister. So it is one cause of concern, right? So, already we saw this topic number of times and again, let us have a look over this. So, if you are talking about this election commission of India, Supreme Court declined to stay a new law which brushed aside a top court judgment to include CJI Chief Justice of India as a member of high powered selection committee and this selection committee will be appointing Chief Election Commissioner and as well as other two election commissioners. So actually recently government came up with this act of CEC and other election commissioners appointment 
conditions of service and terms of act, act terms of office act of 2023 so this act which has been diluted diluted the supreme court judgment by replacing chief justice of india with union cabinet minister and who is going to be that union cabinet minister that is a decision based on the prime minister itself so prime minister will be nominating that person that means there is increasing of executive role in this appointment process of this election commission of india is happening so that what happens so there is a lack of independence that we can say so key provisions of this act here is so this act will be dealing about appointment about salary and removal of this chief election commissioner and as well as other election commissioners so we're talking about this appointment process chief election commissioner and as well election commissioners so they will be appointed by the president so that will be based on the recommendations of selection committee selection committee contains prime minister cabinet minister and as well as leader of opposition party so here the selection committee will consist of prime minister union cabinet minister and leader of opposition party and the recommendations of the selection committee that will be valid even when there is a vacancy in this committee so if there is any vacancy even though the decision taken by the selection committee will be valid and a search committee headed by cabinet secretary will propose panel of names and from this panel of names selection committee will be picking out the names okay and if we talking about the removal of process so article 324 so class 5 which allows chief election commissioner to be removed like a supreme court judge and ecs they can be recommend they can be removed on this recommendations of chief election commissioner so this is also very important from your prelims so in this way also you can expect the questions so now let us see next important topic from our opet page so this are opet page right opinion page so here there is one article which is relevant that is about guaranteed msp is an ethical imperative so what happens here is if you go through newspaper every day so you can see the case of suicide so in this suicide so there is there will be suicide of especially farmers or you can see like a women's like housewife who are going for this torture domestic violence etc and suicides of students in iit is also increasing day by day so here especially to stop the suicides and to increase the income of this farmers so we can go with this guaranteed msp that is minimum support price okay so this is a thing which mainly given here and especially we will be focusing on what this is msp so from this msp there is a high chance of getting your prelims based question so now let us see the basic facts regarding this msp so recently what happened why this msp is in use because during the fourth round of talks with protesting farmers so farmers are protesting especially from this punjab region okay so because of this in this fourth round of talks with the protesting farmers so your central government presented a proposal for this crop diversification panchayat and actually so they want to go for diversification of uh, crops actually majorly we can see rice and wheat they are grown in this panchayat so actually from this 1960s so when we implemented this green revolution so we focused on three areas that is panchayat haryana and western up panchayat haryana and western up regions right so at that time so they focused on this rice and wheat okay so now they are facing lots of problems so now this punjab haryana and up or the regions they are facing negative impacts of this green revolution like ground water exploitation land is becoming infertile day by day increasing of salination of plants that is salination increasing of salinity salinity in the lands or the soil and decreased productivity is seen so these are the some impacts negative impacts of this green revolution so here yes 
this farmers are they are fighting for msp and now here government said that we are going for this diversification of crops in this punjab and under this proposal of this diversification of crops government promoted cooperatives cooperatives would offer five year contracts to procure five crops that is tuar dal urad dal masoor dal and maize and cotton at minimum support price so when we came up with this concept of minimum support price during this 1966 to 67 itself as part of extensive agriculture reforms msp also introduced for the first time by the central government and as well as minimum support price is nothing but the minimum price for any crop so it is a minimum price for any crop that government considers that government considers as remunerative that can be given for the farmers and because these farmers they are deserving the support so it also the price it is a price that government agencies they pay whenever they procure the particular crop from the farmers so it is a way of protecting the farmers in india from the uncertainties of the market because actually farmers are getting huge losses because of this middlemen in this apmc markets or intermediaries they are taking they are taking the commissions and if you talking about which are the crops covered under this msp so there are around 23 crops so out of this seven or cereals bajra wheat maize paddy barley ragi and jowa and five or pulses like tur dal chana dal masoor dal urad dal and moong dal and seven or oil seeds like safflower mustard niger seed soya bean groundnut sesame and sunflower and four or commercial crops like sugarcane copra cotton and rajoot so here you have to remember even this names of the uh, crops which are getting this msp because in 2018 or 19 if i am not wrong so there was question regarding this okay crops are getting this msp so from that point also it is very important so here in this analysis i am covering entire your current affairs from prelims mains and as far as interview point of view so please don't uh, skip this current affairs it is very important for your preparation and if you understand in the things what i am saying here or if you are getting knowledge and if you are getting at least interest to read this hindu newspaper so please do hit the like button so don't forget to hit the like button and even one more thing here is i am available in this office in this offline center at this ashok nagar so if you want to get the free mentorship and we are going to conduct this prelims mentorship test on this sunday so if you want you can come and you can do the registration and after registration after the test you will be having assessment and mentorship will be uh, provided and you will be having a dedicated session of a mentor on that day and after that you will be having the classes every day at least one to one half hour so if you want to attend those classes which are of free okay and the content will be like at most useful and you can expect like 30 to 40 questions from that class itself so if you want to clear this prelims and if you want to get the free mentorship and free test and free classes so come and register and even we are providing the free study space also so from tomorrow onwards you can come and you can utilize the study space also clear yes and if you have any queries you can call me on this number 8074765513 and even you can whatsapp on this number if you have any queries and even if you want to do the registration if you can't come to the office you can register on this number on whatsapp so we will be sending you the digital form you can fill and you can send it back so that we will be making the registrations for you and you can come directly to the office on this sunday so that you can take the test on the sunday okay so even if you want to come and meet me directly you can call to this number and you can ask about whether i will be available or not and later on you can come okay and one more thing here is if you can't do the registration now also so you can do the registration on that day on examination you can reach this offline branch by 10 o'clock and you can fill the form and you can sit in the class and you can take the test it is not like that
Okay, that is your wish and based on your comfortable only. Yes, now let us see how does this government is deciding on this MSP. So, government announces MSP at the start of each cropping season. For example, Rabi season and Karif season. So, MSP is decided after the government exhaustively studying the recommendations are made by the CACP. So, CACP will be recommends this okay, MSP. And these recommendations they will be based on the prefixed formula. It includes actual cost incurred plus family labor. Okay, as well as a sort of fixed assets or rent paid by the farmers. So now let us see next important article it is about forced labor. So here you have to see some dimensions. So you have to understand what is this forced labor. You have to see why this forced labor is there in India. And you have to see from international relations. So what is the data of this forced labor? And you have to see what is this ILO International Labor Organization and its role. You have to see what are the functions and also mandate of this ILO. And you have to see like which are the constitutional provisions present in India which are addressing about this forced labor. And even you have to see which are the acts or laws present in India deals with this forced labor. So all these are important dimensions from your polity, from your international relations, from history point of view. Clear? So now let us go on to this topic and let us see the details. So recently one study by this International Labour Organization in short ILO released in Geneva. So in Geneva this ILO released one study. So this study has found forced labour generates illegal profits of around $36 billion per year. So because of this forced labour 36 billion dollars of profit is generated and this is increased of 37 percentage of such illegal profit since 2014. Since 2014 in this illegal profits it is contributing 37 percentage and study also said that it is fueled by both a growth in the number of people forced into labour as well as higher profit generated from the exploitation of victims. So for the study, surveys have been conducted among the workers who are working in Saudi Arabia, Qatar and this report, the title here is Profits and Poverty, the Economics of Forced Labour. So this report which also estimates that traffickers and criminals, they are generating to close like $10,000 per victim. But actually earlier, like 10 years ago, they used to get around eight thousand rupees eight thousand dollars but now they are getting around ten thousand dollars per victim so the total annual legal illegal profits on this labor is highest in europe and central asia and third one is asia and pacific region and fourth one is americas and fifth one is africa and last one is arab states so this is according to the date of that report and the report also said that forced commercial sexual exploitation which is around 73 percentage of illegal profits so out of this forced labor so about 73 percentage is around sexual violation or sexual exploitation so there are 26.7 27.6 million people they are engaged in this forced labor in 2021 that means for every thousand people 3.5 people they are working as forced labor and between 2016 and 2021, the number of people in forced labor, so which has been increased by 2.7 million. And now let us see some facts regarding this ILO, that is International Labor Organization. So ILO is United Nations Agency for World of Work. So the mandate of this ILO is to advance social and economic justice 
and to set international labor standards and the motto of this international labor organization is to on the basis of providing peace okay and to provide decent work for all so where is the headquarters in switzerland and the parent organization is nothing but economic and social council of united nations and if you see history so this street is very important so this international labor organization which had been formed as part of treaty of versailles in 1919 okay and members are 187 members and the structure is we have only three party united nation agency and this will be bringing together the governments and employees uh, workers and representatives of 187 member states so these are the some important facts regarding this international labor organization and now let us go back to our hindu and let us see if there are any articles important or not so in this text and context this is about electoral bonds number of times we discuss this topic and if you have time you can go through this article and in this news page there is nothing much important i discussed about this topic of ilo is in this world page today's article this is the continuation of express article that is gaza is in famine and many of them they are starving for hunger so that is the thing which mainly said so here united nation is saying that starvation is using as a weapon by israel on this gaza and here you can see one more article that is direct tax kitty crosses 97 percentage of 2023 to 2024 target so here you have to see some dimensions so which are those dimensions so this article is talking about tax so in this tax we have two types direct tax and we have indirect tax So you have to know what exactly is the meaning of direct tax and what is this indirect tax, and you have to see examples of this direct tax and examples of this indirect tax. So I will give you one example that you know, like GST. Wherever you go, GST follows. Okay, and the next one is like income tax, corporate tax, etc. So finally, this article is saying that there is increase of direct tax collections. Okay, so that's it. So these are the very important articles that appeared in our today's Hindu newspaper. So by this, I'm concluding, and I want to show you like where can you get the notes of this class. So this is Rathod's IS classes Telegram channel. So here you can get the classes, and as well as you can get the notes. You can easily download. And next one is this is Rathod's IS Academy YouTube channel. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel because we are providing at most quality videos. And if you want to get more knowledgeable videos soon, yes, you have to subscribe. And one more thing here is so please do give Google rating and review for Rathod's IS Academy based on your experience. And next one is this is our website Rathod's IS Academy website. So prelims is very much near. So if you are not completing any subjects and if you are having the doubts so you can take a single subject as well like if you want to take only economy you can take economy only history only history like that you can take the single modules also and even admissions for this offline foundation batch is going on and this offline batch is going to be started from july okay july first week or june ending so you can take the admissions admissions are going on So that is the utmost quality that we are providing, and it is my challenge. Like so, in YouTube, know where you can see this type of analysis in this multi-dimensional way. So in the same way, we are going to teach each and every subject with this utmost care, and we are going to teach each and every single uh, sub-topic as well. And we are going to see like previous questions and practice questions will be there, and main chance reading practice. So everything will be there from the day one itself. and students are our utmost care so you can come and you can join this foundation course and the cost 
of this foundational course is also like accessible and affordable for everyone okay you can come and you can join so if you want to take that missions you can call me on the number 807476513 that's all for today thank you so much for watching